Hey everyone, I'm Lewis Mallet. Welcome to the podcast. This episode was originally recorded on one of my live streams. If you want to watch or listen to more of my content, please follow me on the various social media channels. Please leave a review, subscribe, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. So today it's really a pleasure to be joined by Graham Hartop, who is the CEO of Hampden Private Bank. So many people have been thinking about personal finance, what to do, how house prices are going to go, interest rates, mortgages, you know, all of those things. So um, I thought I'd get an expert. Um, And so let me get Graham. Um, Graham, thank you very much for joining me. Delighted to be here. Thanks, Lewis. Pleasure. Um, Where are you? Are you in the office? You're at home? (laughs) I'm in my dining room as I have been for the last nine months in Edinburgh. Right. And so how, I mean, just to start with, like, how have you found the pandemic? How's it been? Well, um, I, I mean, first, first of all, in terms of the, the, the technology side of things and moving to this remote working, uh, it's actually been remarkably successful. And uh, we uh, took a decision even prior to the official lockdown to just start testing that out with all our staff. And it's been remarkably successful. And we've had lots of comments coming in from our clients just saying how much they appreciate still being able to contact us in the same way. So I think that that has been a very positive factor. I guess the negative factor is the fact that you have much less contact with your colleagues and uh, yeah. you know, and you, that quite often sparks conversations. We've also had about uh, 10 people joining the bank since lockdown. So they've oh. actually joined and their only experience is uh, meeting their colleagues online, uh, which is quite an unusual situation. It's quite interesting because you know, a lot of people are like, you know, what's the culture like? You know, I haven't been into their office. They haven't taken my coat. They've not made me a coffee. I haven't even tried their biscuits. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, this like feeling you get of, of what a place is like. Um, so it's been it's been really interesting recruiting over the pandemic as well. All, all of it virtual. Um, how, how have you found, obviously, g- given you're leading, leading the bank, how have you found, say, building it over the pandemic and, uh, and maybe getting across building this virtual culture? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it has been very interesting. And, uh, you know, we have, uh, we build our bank on relationships. And, you know, normally prior to March of last year, uh, that was, all, you know, nearly always on a face to face basis. So, uh, you know, that clearly changed the way that we were dealing with people. But because we've got very good uh, modern technology, that communication with our clients and, and prospective clients has still been extremely good. And, uh, you know, although it's built on relationships, we have got that good technology there uh, yeah. and we can still deliver the same level of service. So, so actually what we've seen over, uh, it's nearly a year now, is that much more business has been referred our way uh, because we can continue to deliver that true relationship service. And I know in some of the bigger banks, it's more of a challenge and uh, getting through to call centers. And, you know, that's the the, the, the sort of feedback that we get. Uh, so, so our existing clients are very happy with the service they're given that they're being given, and they are then introducing us into their contact bases, and Absolutely. so the client the client base has really grown over the last year. Wow, interesting. So, so, so have you found that the, the customers have happily transitioned to? Is it video call you're doing or telephone yeah. like that? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a mixture. And uh, essentially, uh, we try to allow our clients to contact us in the way that suits them. Uh, right. Now, now a lot of our clients would have uh, used uh, telephone in the past, and they will continue to use telephone. A lot, of course, use their digital channels. And, uh, you know, we've got good internet banking and digital banking capability. Uh, and a lot uh, have actually adopted the new video technology quite well, too. And particularly yeah. for, for new client situations, I, I think that's very important to get to know people and, and using that video uh, conferencing capability. No, definitely. Because, uh, you know, it's interesting because obviously private bank versus high street bank, you know, I expect and I, people expect from you, you know, like, you know, five star service without wanting to be cheesy. But, you know, that real that real like high degree of service, personal touch and things like that. Have you... Have you found you've been able to, to, to deliver that 
just as effectively online versus again seeing them face to face you know wearing a suit and tie i guess it's been unusual for you not to wear <laughs> the suit and tie um has it been yeah have you found that transition yeah I, I mean it has been very interesting and and you're absolutely right about the the suit and tie i haven't uh, taking a suit out of the wardrobe since last March, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope the moths haven't eaten them all. Um, but uh, you know, no. In, in terms of service, we ha it's been relatively seamless for us. You know, the, the the difference for us is that we don't get that face to face contact, and you know, quite normally we're out and about seeing our clients, and uh, you know, we have them along at events and things like that. So that that has obviously yeah. uh, diminished or or completely stopped. But in te in terms of the service our clients get, what they really value is being able to contact the private banker uh, at any point in time, particularly when they've got a, a more difficult situation to deal with. Uh, and th that uh, sort of communication channel hasn't changed for them. Uh, yeah. So so that uh, our clients really value that. And, and, and that's why so much business has been referred to us. Brilliant, brilliant. And do you think just, I guess, post-COVID era, sounds like pre-World War, Post World War now, doesn't it? Um, how, how, do you see this 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 trend of like it's almost digitalizing the way you offer and provide your services? Do you see that continuing? Um, yes, very much so. And uh, you know what? Uh, you know our, our main service proposition is about the relationships, but we want to allow our clients to contact us uh, through the mechanisms of their choice. And a lot more people are much more comfortable using uh, digital technology nowadays, and that's great for you know 90% of your transactions, and uh, and we'll continue to develop that. Uh, yeah. So so we've got a good digital platform there. Uh, there's always things that we want to do to uh, evolve and develop that platform, um, yeah. but nonetheless we will still retain that uh, relationship hu human contact because quite a lot of our clients have got quite complex affairs and they need to talk to people about uh, you know how they, they, they best get uh, resolve a particular situation and that is hugely valued by our client base. Brilliant. How are you seeing the economy right now? I mean we've had the Covid, Brexit is on the way now, we've done actually. Yeah. Um, how, what, what's your outlook? This year. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of naturally an optimist, um, but you know, there's there, there's a lot of positive signs there in terms of, uh, you, you know, we've got a bit more political stability. Um, the, the 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 economy was starting to pick up before COVID, and clearly it's been a huge uh, issue uh, over the last nine or ten months. Uh, but there's no doubt about it that with the vaccine coming in, there's a bit of mm -hmm. optimism there that things can. Start start to get back to normal. There is no doubt that uh, there's a lot of people that have uh, managed to, to save a lot of extra money uh, over the period of lockdown. And, you know, and I think that will be utilised in, in quite a way once we do get back to uh, a position where lockdown has ended. Uh, so, so I think that augurs quite well for the economy. Yeah. Uh, a, very, a very important aspect for us uh, is where interest rates are in, in, a, in a bank and uh, you know we're obviously sitting at base rate close to zero uh, yeah. and 10 basis points which has never uh, been the case in, in 300 years of the Bank of England and you yeah. know that, that's that's quite a challenge for a private bank like ours. Yeah and so for th those that don't know um, why is that? So obviously I, I put my money in you charge, I get z almost zero interest. Um, you're lending money and, and, and getting very, very minimal interest back. So, so what, what's the, what are the dynamics around this low interest rates for you? Yeah, so, so, so for, fortunately in the UK, we haven't gone into negative rates and uh, where we've seen that in, in quite a, num a number of other current, uh, countries uh, and currencies. Um, that uh, what what normally happens with a with a private bank um, normally some of your, your net interest margin would come through from your uh, deposit book and private banks are we've got a conservative balance sheet tends to be uh, we have a higher level of deposits than we would have lending 
And you'd normally uh, get a net interest margin to be able to service that deposit base uh, and generate a bit of profitability coming through from that deposit book. When interest yeah. rates are uh, down at uh, zero or very close to zero, you've therefore got no interest margin, A, to service the um, those deposits, uh, and B, obviously, to make a bit more profitability in them. But it, it, it's hugely important, and we're building this business for the long term to continue to to grow our deposit book and of course yeah. what 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 we need that for is then to uh, for us to be able to undertake our lending activities and uh, we're getting great success in that and um, what what we have real specialism in in, in the lending side is uh, what i would uh, refer to as complex but low risk lending you know it's to okay. uh, private the private banking world people have complex affairs and it's it's about getting uh, our very experienced bankers to understand the affairs so we don't have a uh, an automated mechanism to make the lending decisions it's about experienced bankers making those decisions so again that's been something that has been uh, very uh, popular uh, over this period, people being able to discuss their lending needs with us. Right. So it's quite a lot of stuff to unpack there. So if you're in, I mean, I think just to wind back, if you're in, if you've been employed a, 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 during the pandemic, um, you, you would have found actually you've got more cash at the end of each month, right? You're not commuting, you're not, not, not going out as much, no entertainment. So you know, being employed, I think you've got more cash. What's interesting is, given it's the there's low interest rates, are people actually keeping their money in a bank account, earning zero? In fact, with in, with inflation over time, right, the money, the value of money goes down over time. So, are people just leaving it in there, or or are they investing in the stock market and doing other interesting things with it now? Yeah, I I, I think. Um... It's been a mixture, actually, and if you go back right at the, the beginning of the, the pandemic period, uh, I think there was more just staying in cash. But uh, I think as, as the vaccine has come through, people are starting to feel more optimistic. So there's more money uh, going into alternative investments, uh, going back into the stock market or looking for other uh, forms of investment rather than leaving it in cash, which, as you rightly say, is earning virtually zero at this stage yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting i think I, it feels like in fact my wife has just had the vaccine um she works in the nhs my dad's just had it he's 76 or 7 um so it feels like once you start to know people that have, have had the vaccine then you know you're right you feel so much of this is confidence isn't it and you, and you feel like it's getting better i just can't help but feel give it given a year or two it might be like the 1920s you know, it's going to come roaring back because people are like people want to feels like they want to go out and, and spend money. They want to have fun with their friends. They want to entertain. And, you know, I feel it will come back strongly. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely share that. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, just the things that we took uh, for granted pre-COVID that, you know, we went out to restaurants and, you know, you, you socialise with your friends and, and did other other things that uh, people are just so looking forward to getting back to doing these things, which will really help boost the economy. And, uh, you know, so I do think we'll get a, a quick bounce back. I think so. And there's hopefully, I think, you know, because the other side of this, because, you know, if you are fortunate enough to be in, uh, be in employment, you know, and you have more money, that's great. We also just have to bear in mind, there's an awful lot of people that, you know, have fallen on the, on the other side, you know, lost their jobs, um, yeah. you know, having to pivot, think about new careers. So, you know, hopefully there's a lot of work done around, around creating new jobs as well. As, as time I, 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 I absolutely, I, you know, and I absolutely feel that, and, you know, and particularly, um, you know, some of the industries that have been so badly impacted over this time, it, it is going to take a bit of time to to build those back. And, you know, we spoke about the, the hospitality industry there. And yeah. I know looking around in Edinburgh, there are a number of businesses that have been around for a long, long time who've actually permanently closed now, which I, I think is just tragic. Um, but, uh, you know, that's a reflection of what has happened over the last year. But, you know, I'm hopeful that there'll be lots of new businesses that will spring up once we do get back to yeah. uh, that, that bit of normality. Yeah. yeah, no, I had some great stats and I can't remember exactly what they were, so I'm not going to quote them verbatim, but... There's been a lot of new businesses that have started. I mean, a lot have failed and closed, as you said. But I think also in times like this, people are, are being quite entrepreneurial. 
you know, if you've lost your job as an employee, what can you do? Can you start a business? Can you start an online business? So there might be another wave of, you know, entrepreneurship um, uh, this year, I think, which would be really cool. Yeah, I, I absolutely uh, agree with that, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, technology has, has really helped in in that, and uh, you know, getting some new ideas, new new business activities coming through. So I think you know, in some respects, some of the businesses, uh, you, you know, it's it's good to get that rejuvenation uh, coming yeah. through. But you know, there's no doubt about it. There's a lot of good businesses that have been uh, badly impacted by this. But I'm sure we will get a lot of good new businesses uh, yep. coming through once we're through the pandemic definitely you you mentioned negative interest rates um so can you explain that so what what's a scenario when when a government might have to to drop it even further and then what what is the effect am i am i essentially paying you to keep my money <laughs> how does it work <laughs> yeah yes well you well you you, you that, that is the case and uh you know it, it really is uh you know quite a quite a bizarre situation which we've never seen that in the uk um my my own take on where we are in the uk at the moment is that i think it's unlikely we'll move into negative rate territory but certainly the regulators um uh, you know, they, they, it is there as a tool to use it should they think it is the right thing to do. Uh, but I think it's unlikely. But you're absolutely right. So on a negative interest rate, and we've seen it in other currencies, the euro is a good example at the moment, uh, where there are negative rates in the euro so that uh, certainly for bigger depositors, if they deposit uh, monies into a bank, then they will be charged uh, to to actually hold those deposits. And and actually, uh, you know, on the other side of that uh, balance sheet, um, uh, I, w there have been one or two situations where borrowers have actually been paid to undertake uh, lending. Uh, so wow. <laughs> it, 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 it is perverse, but uh, that is really a reflection of these negative interest rates. Uh, yeah. And it. And it is, you know, it, it's designed to to help the economy and and help banks to uh, continue lending out into the community and, you know, to deter people storing up savings to use it in in other ways. Interesting. Well, that moves us nicely onto the housing market because again, that's a huge a huge topic for so many people. And it'd be interesting to see what you hear your perspective on it. You, 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 I've heard recently that the housing market's done pretty well in the UK, and I guess that's driven by people wanting to move out of London. Um, and, and I think a lot of people have been trying to buy properties in the country and, and things like that. What, what, what have you seen from your perspective? Yeah, I, I mean, it's been very buoyant over the last year. And if we, if we, if we look back, say, look at 2019, actually, uh, the housing market was stronger in Scotland uh, in compared to London, the southeast, where we tend to have a lot of, lot of business. Although it was still at a reasonable level, it was stronger in Scotland in 2019. Uh, 2020, actually, we've seen it being very strong uh, down in London, the southeast. There's definitely uh, quite a bit of people trying to upscale, move from central London locations and uh, and into more um, uh, yeah. rural or um, you know smaller towns out with London. Uh, so people just looking for, understandably, looking for that bit of space. But definitely, the the, the market has been pretty buoyant. Uh, stamp duty holiday has yeah. has helped in 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 that regard. Uh, that is due to end at the end of March this year, which will have some form of impact. Um, quite a lot of the, the the commentators, particularly the estate agents, are um, you know they're still reasonably optimistic, but a few commentators looking as though there may be. Uh, price falls over the course of this year once the stamp duty holiday ends. But actually, yeah. we saw the the highest rates of house price inflation last year that, we, that we've seen for some time. So I think the average was about seven seven and a half percent across the country, which is a pretty significant uplift. Uh, and London itself, actually, for the first time, the average house price is over half a million pounds. That's even went up this year. Interesting. Yeah. I it feels like, yeah, I don't know. It feels like, it feels like it might, it might be a little bit more tricky this year um, with the housing market. I think we've seen, we've seen, we've seen rental income go down. Um, rate um, rents are going down in London. Um, yeah. You know, from people I speak to, you know, maybe ten, fifteen percent. Um, so, so that will be interesting. It feels like it's funny. I spoke to a few friends that have moved out to the countryside and. 
it feels like people might end up moving back to the city because the thing with the city um, is this just debate between country versus city but you know during a pandemic it's lovely to be in the countryside but you don't there's, there's a lot less people around or there's a lot less things to do um you know city life is so um you can go for a walk it's quite vibrant even during a pandemic so i think it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if there's a, a flow back to a city like london or uh if the countryside and uh, and more rural areas remain strong yeah i i, I mean I, I share your your view and optimism about that london will continue to thrive uh, we have seen a bit of a change at the moment. Once uh, we're through the pandemic, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty hopeful that we'll get back to uh, sort of some kind of normality that that we saw pre uh, pre pandem pandemic pandemic uh, yeah. because it, you know it is such an attractive place to live in London. It's cool. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how it lands there because because you know kind of winding back to the start of our of our conversation around you know, being able to do things digitally on video and it, it really enables companies. And I've seen this firsthand, you know, they're able to hire from a much wider geographical scope. A lot of companies that would want people based in London or in a certain city, they're thinking now, why do they need to be? Yeah. I, 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 and that, that that is very much the case, and uh, yeah. you know that with technology, it inevitably, and I think a lot of firms will be seeing this, particularly in the, the sort of professional services arena, that uh, we will behave a bit differently once we're through this. And uh, you know, I I was probably a bit more skeptical about home working prior to coming into this, um, but actually, productivity, the service to our clients has been extremely good over this period. So we'll end up with a you know a, a a hybrid type of, of model going forward yeah, I think so. yeah. um, but you know inevitably that will have a bit of a, an impact on the commercial property market and in, in places yes. like london definitely just to, just to end what is your now you've experienced working from home for nine months what is your ideal working scenario once all this is uh is is, is over yeah, no, uh, interestingly, uh, and, and I, I'm very fortunate because uh, I only live a few minutes from the office, I'm right in central Edinburgh, uh, so it is not a hardship for me to get into the office. So I think, I, I, you know, I'd probably, I'll move back to probably 80% in the office and maybe a day a week so that you can really have that good quality time to think and, uh, you know, maybe focus much more on strategic issues that you're not getting interrupted in the office. So I think for me, that, that would be ideal. Some of our people, I think they'll move back to 100% in the office, but right. some actually could be the other way around and that um, four days a week, they might be out of the office and maybe just a day a week in the office. So there'll be a bit of a balance there. Interesting. And you're now and you're now comfortable with your with your employees kind of almost choosing the, the best way for them to work in the week. Uh, we, yes, we will. And, you know, that that's something that we'll be looking at the operational model very carefully. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, some people, there's a huge benefit from being in the office. Uh, others, uh, you know, we want them to be out and about. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, Graham, thank you so much for joining me. Really appreciate it. Um, and I look, I look forward to seeing you face to face for a coffee very soon. Look forward to that, Lewis. Thanks a Thank lot. You. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.